Welcome to Faith on Film, a program designed to keep you informed with everything that's happening in the world of faith and family films. Last week, uh, I had a, a young man that was the lead role in a movie that I felt was very relevant for, for today's youth. And today I have his dad. Well, not, not his real dad, his film <laughs> dad. <laughs> let, me, let, me, uh, let me introduce him here. Benjamin Onyango, and I hope I said that right. You can correct me afterward, Benjamin. It's probably Ooh, you best, you know, huh? You know. You nailed it. Oh, yeah, I nailed, you nailed it. it. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're probably best known for your role in God's Not Dead, Tears of the Sun, and Beautifully Broken. But in a more recent That's film, true. you play the role of Chuku. Now, see, now this one I could probably mess up. Chukuma. Chukuma. Chukuma, the yeah. father of CJ <laughs> and pastor of a local church on the movie Freshman Year. Benjamin, welcome to Faith on Film. I always have trouble with names. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, some names are hard, man. Even Chukuma wasn't really yeah, easy. That name is hidden, you know, but yeah, you can, you can. <laughs> well, as I mentioned, I, uh, I interviewed, uh, in last week's show, I interviewed uh, Diallo, who played CJ in the movie, um, and I mentioned that I would be interviewing his dad, or his, his film dad, and that would be you. <laughs> now, um, this movie, I felt, was... Um, was very relevant for for today. What what is your thought about this movie? Yeah, this movie, like you've said, very relevant for today, and so I mean, so on time. It's like yeah. it's one of those things that, but most of the people who watched it and uh, the feedback that I was getting, oh my God, Benji, this is one of the best mm -hmm. ones because it is so real. It tells it it doesn't lie about the things. Whatever, everything is so true. These are the yeah. things that teenagers go through. You know, they, here you are, a, pa a pastor's son. <laughs> I guess. Pregnant. Are you kidding me? So those are things that so most pastors would try to hide. But in this movie, it's like, hey, it happened, it happened. Life goes on, but what do we do to fix uh, yes. uh, what's broken and how do we get forward from here? So it's just an amazing movie. I love it. I've watched it like 15 times myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, interestingly enough, now in this movie you play a pastor, and in yes. real life you are a pastor, aren't you? No, I, I'm actually no, but I, I play <laughs> I'm a bass player in the church, yes, but I've <laughs> okay. never really been. Pastor. All right, all right. Now, in this movie, of course, you did play a pastor at, at first, and, and you said that, uh, you know, it uh, rather than try to hide it or, or like pretend it never happened, you, you know, you worked at how it was going to get fixed. Um, but yeah. at first, you seemed like a pretty stringent dad in this movie. Uh, how, how did you, by the way, how did you get this role? <laughs> Are you that stringent? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm actually not, but I was playing an African dad. Uh -huh. And that's okay. really how we really are. We're very strict. My father was super strict guy, but really? my goodness. Wow, it was great. But yeah, so so here I am, very strict, mm -hmm. thinking that, you know, because of my strictness, everything's going to run right and all mm -hmm. that stuff. You know, uh -huh, but God knows that's different plans. See what happens. <laughs> you know, but, but I, after I realized, okay, hmm, it's already happened. Right. You know, the milk spilled. What you going to do? <laughs> so let's just uh, uh, move on, you, you, you know. Yeah, just try and uh, make things better from mm -hmm. this point going forward. Yeah, so that's, that's what I did. That's fantastic. And you know what I, what I love about the movie, of course, is that it should show our young people that, you know what, we, we all make mistakes. Um, exactly. I've, trust me, I've made plenty of them. Um, but <laughs> it's not the end of the world. And, uh, and if we do the right thing, uh, things yeah. will eventually actually turn out okay, right? Yeah, they'll straighten out, you know, uh, just because you fell. <clears throat> there's a movie, mm -hmm. there's a song that I think is Peter Tosh that say, I fall down, or, or Bob Marley, one of the two of them. I fall down, and let's get up and, and fight again. Up. Yep. You know, exactly. So just because you fell, it doesn't mean, just like you said, it's the end of the world. Just dust yourself up and see, why did I fall? What is it I did that made me fall? Yes. And then try and avoid those pitfalls, pitfalls, and move forward. You know, in another, in another, in another direction, doing positive things. Right. And you know what? I'm I'm gonna say something here that I, I hope my daughter doesn't get upset at me for. But I basically <laughs> was faced with that situation myself with my daughter. And you know, at first I was so 
I literally was so angry. And I was a pastor at the time, by the way. And, and I was mm. just so angry and hurt and embarrassed that I just, I didn't even want to deal with it, you know. And, uh, but eventually I, I, came, I came to terms with all this and, and was very supportive it after that. And that's my first grandson who I absolutely adore. He's the most wonderful kid. Uh, is driving now, is, is uh, you know, is working. <laughs> And, okay. you know, yeah, so now it's, it's all in the past. And, and uh, you know, I go, well, you know, it, uh, it turned out right because we, we did the right thing, I believe. Exactly, you know? exactly. And that's real life. And that's what this movie, A Freshman Year, portrays. Yes. Nothing is, is, is you know, sugar-coated. It's yeah. just the, the, the real deal. You know, this is just how the world works. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to take a quick break right now. And when we come back, let's find out a little bit more about you and who you are, what you've done. Of course, we all remember you from the movie God's Not Dead from both of them, I believe, you know, and uh, uh, but three, both, of three of you were on all three of them. Wow. Yes, and, three and, of, of them. and of course, there's another one that you did, uh, Tears of the Sun, that I remember from all of that. Was, that was a pretty intense movie. So we'll come back yes. and just find out all about you. All right. Thank you very much. Folks, don't go away. We'll be right back. Encourage TV, family-friendly and faith-friendly content absolutely free. Subscribe today and watch hundreds of hours of content on our streaming channels. Visit EncourageTV.com today. really big. What's really big? Those aren't silly. Oh, I know. It's bigger than the size of our house. It's a little bigger than that. Like the size of two houses. No two houses in a spaceship. I bet it's even bigger than the castle. Don't be ridiculous. That's impossible. Only one university in the nation was chosen to demonstrate at the World Equestrian Games. And it's the only Christian university in the South offering an equine management major. Only one university produced the video leading into coverage for the Games. And it's the only university with students hired as part of a broadcast crew for nine Olympic Games. One university, equipping students for a lifetime of leadership and service. Asbury University. Start here. Impact the world. Welcome back to Faith on Film. We're here with Benjamin, uh, who is in a movie that uh, you know I'm just very touched with because it's a movie that I think really is very important for today's youth. But Benjamin, you've been in quite a few other movies. Uh, you know, as we mentioned, the the three uh, God's Not Dead, the uh, um, Tears of the Sun. You're also in a movie that came out just recently, also called um, uh, what's what's it called? That latest movie. Heavenly uh, Deposit, or which one? No. Beautifully broken, yes. Um, but tell us all about you and your career, how you got started in, in films. Uh, you know, they, most of my guests say, "Oh, I, you know, I had this in my heart since I was like three years old." Was that the case with you? Okay, for me, uh, I was uh, a student at Cal State Stanislaus in Turlock, California, mm -hmm. about five hours away from LA. Mm -hmm. And when I graduated in 1992, I just decided, you know, this is time for me to go do me. I was really, I wanted to be the first person in our house, mm -hmm. in my, my whole family, to go to university. None okay. of us ever did. Wow. Nobody in my country ever went to university. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to be the first one. So I saved money and left Kenya, came to California. Uh, and when I finally graduated, I told my mom, hey, mom, there's your degree. I'm going to Hollywood <laughs> to do what I wanted to do. And that's how I get, got started. And when I got to Hollywood, there was all these uh, 
uh, I found um, all these little numbers that tell you where you can audition and all that. Right. Stuff. I, I cut one and I called it and and I did a lot of. Uh, I was an extra for a very long time. You know, the problem with being an extra, although it's a, it's work, is mm-hmm. like you tell your friend, "Hey, go see me in ER. I'm in there." Yeah, I'm serious. I'm kind of in the back, in the back over there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they go watch it. Everybody's like, "Oh, Benji, man, you lied to us. You are not in that movie, dude." I was, you know. So you're like, "Oh, did you see that leg that went like this? That was my leg." <laughs> so, 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 so that's how it got started. And uh, and I used to tell every movie I went to was an extra. I would, I would tell them I spoke Swahili. I spoke Swahili, mm-hmm. and it didn't work for me until the 55th time I did it. Because I didn't give up. I kept on saying it, saying it, and saying it. The 55th, I think it was the 50th or the 55th time that it worked on the set of ER. And, oh. uh, no, no, not ER, on the set of, uh, oh boy, the X-Files. Okay. And then, said, hey, Benjamin, you say that you speak Swahili? I said, yes, I did. I, I did. Okay, can you teach everybody on the set how to speak some words and all that? And they bumped me from an extra that day. To a principal player and I was like, yay, you know. Oh, so the next day I went in, yeah, next day I went in as a usual, but I found myself is a, a, a trailer with my name on it, an RV. I'm like, what? <laughs> oh, wow, this is amazing. So I went three days, speaking role. The next thing was Tears of the Sun. And after that, you know, this movie started. Because oh, now I'm doing and everything. That's how I got started. Oh, wow. Well, if there's any casting directors out there, I speak Spanish. <laughs> I speak Spanish. I don't speak Swahili, but I speak Spanish. Let's see if that helps. Uh, wow. So, um, <laughs> that, that, that was a very interesting story, man. Now, this movie, Beautifully Broken, what's, what's that movie all about? That's one of your latest movies, right? Besides Freshman yeah. Year. Yeah, Freshman Year, yeah. Beautifully Broken was, uh, man, this movie was just amazing. Yeah. You know, and uh, I was playing a real person. His name is William Muizerwa, who actually, mm-hmm. you know, remember in 1994 when there was the genocide yeah. and people were being hacked to death and all that stuff. He escaped. Can you imagine people being killed at roadblocks and all that stuff? Wow. And he managed to escape with a pregnant wife and all that stuff. Ran into ran into Uganda, ran more days into Kenya, ended up in a in a refugee camp, and there was an American looking for 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 for, for uh, foreigners, you know, re- mm-hmm. refugees who qualify take them to America or Europe or whatever, and send him to to um, to Nashville. And so playing this guy, I actually met him. They brought him on the set. So, you know, nice. I, we went to the restaurant, talked, and he, I could hear how he talks, his demeanor and everything and all that stuff. So uh, it's, 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 it's a crazy movie, but it's a true story. You know, mm-hmm. it's all three... He, uh, Three families, an American, two um, an American family, and two African families whose lives collide in this, you know, crazy yeah. way. But uh, it's a movie about uh, love, reconciliation, and just it's it's an amazing movie. That's one of the thing, one of the movies that I'm really really proud that I did. You know. Now, do you kind of exclusively do faith movies now, or or because I most everything I've seen you in has been a faith, you know, a Christian movie. Oh, yeah, that's the funny part. It's like <laughs> the last seven movies I did are all faith. Right. Started with God's Not Dead, God's Not Dead 2, God's Not Dead 3, God's Not Dead 1. How I got beautifully broken was uh, Lisa Arnold, who was one of the producers of God's Not mm-hmm. Dead 1, told the people beautifully broken, hey, I got the guy for you. You know, his name is Benjamin. He was in God's Not right. Dead 1. And that's starting to beautifully broken. And then after that, of course, the... Uh, George, the, the the director of Heavenly Deposit, called me because he lives in LA, you know, and asked me if I would like to be in his movie, and that's how I got into that one. And then Freshman Year, also uh, uh, the director Johnson, <coughs> Jude Johnson, mm-hmm. emailed me and said, "Hey, I'm doing a movie here. Would you like to be in it and all that?" And I said, "Sure, I'll do it." And that's how I ended up with six movies because God's not there's three of them. And then uh, there's the last one that I did, which is still not even out. It's called Jesus mm-hmm. Saved. Okay. And yeah. It, so what most people ask me, so is it the faith page for you? Well, if it is, then thank God. Because I think mm-hmm. I'm still working. Yeah. And I'll do some ministry anyways, you know, talk, talk to the youth and let them know, right. you know, there's a better way and all that stuff. But no, I'm, I'm not calling myself a faith-based movie okay. actor. No, I'm a 
You're an actor. I can do it. Yeah. Yeah. See, what happens is when a good Christian producer finds somebody that is excellent at what they do, they want to use, everybody wants to use them. So. <laughs> exactly. That's what happened in all seven. So sure. I was lucky yeah. now. So uh, if people want to follow you, find out anything else that you'll be doing in the future, um, how, how can they follow you? Do you have a web page? Uh, what's the best way to, to continue to follow you? Even Instagram, I think my, uh, my it's Benji Bendrix. Mm -hmm. I go by that. Um, and also Twitter, I think it's also Benji Bendrix. If not, it's Benjamin Ochia. <laughs> I have so many names. That you have. Yeah, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not so big on, uh, on, on uh, no. social media. I could do better, you know. Yeah, hey, yeah I know. I, I've, I've had to kind of get more into that myself. Well, Benjamin, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. And uh, we do look forward to, to seeing what else, what else you do because uh, you, have, you do have that great character that's just so cool to watch. All righty. Thank, yeah, you, so thank much, you so much. Benjamin. Folks, don't go away. We'll be right back. I never realized how much work goes into taking care of horses. You think that's hard? Try taking care of thousands of animals at the same time. Go ahead. Think bigger. Just one. Filmmaking. Have you ever considered being an actor or director of a major feature film? But what if God is calling you to do just that? Let this be your pulpit. And you learn filmmaking on two backlots, a first century backlot and a small town backlot under the watchful eyes of Christian professional filmmakers like Dr. Mark Kuchin. So what are you waiting for? 469-655-3222. Transformation Film Institute, a place where passion meets purpose. I wonder if penguins have knees. I wonder how many colors we can't see. I wonder why there's so many stars in the universe. I wonder if we ever looked like apes. You want to find out? I wonder if puppies have belly buttons. Welcome back. Uh, I sure hope that you enjoyed that interview with Benjamin as much as I did. Uh, what a great guy he is, and it's great that he's working on these Christian films. I really want to encourage you, by the way, to look for that film freshman year, especially if you have teenagers in your household, whether it be your kids or your grandkids. This is a great movie for them. Uh, so look it up. I know it's on Netflix, uh, and if you don't have Netflix, look for it, find it, and get it. You will not be disappointed. Now, a couple of months ago, well, I don't know, maybe three, four months ago, I, uh, I shared with you a clip of a very good filmmaker friend of mine, uh, Stephen, who just creates these beautiful teaching clips, uh, these teaching films that are so funny, uh, you just will never forget them. I promised you that I would show you some more. Well, today I'm here to keep that promise, and here's a nice clip from Benjamin that's very appropriate for this, for this time right now. It deals with racism, so enjoy. What's up, people? Oh, I got something on my mind. Oh. Let's talk about it. Wait, what? One more time. My wink too early. Um, okay. I remember in elementary school, I had friends named Zachary, Bill, and Garfield. I even had a crush on a girl named Anne Marie. <laughs> they would be playing Dungeons and Dragons and, and then we'd all get together and play tetherball. Don't act like you never played tetherball. I mean, we were true friends, like a little family. And then one day high school came around and I can remember running into my friends like, oh, what's up, Zachary? What's up, Peter? What's up, George? And they was like, oh, what? 
What's up, Steven? <laughs> uh, gotta go to class, bro. <laughs> wow. And then the next thing you know, the first day of college rolled around. And I can remember seeing William and Tommy, and I'm like, oh, snap. What's up, William? What's up, Tommy? And they was like, Steven, in public, bro? No. No, bro. Uh, um, go Obama. Um, bro, I gotta go to class. I gotta go to class, bro. Oh, really? It's like that, okay. So anyway, I made friends of my own that year and without realizing it, I began to change. It really hit me one day in between classes, I went to get some lunch and I remember seeing William and Tommy and they were like, oh, hey, what's up, Steven? Come eat with us. And I was like, um, uh, yo, 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 how you know my name, son? Hey man, in public? Really? Really? Listen, yo, look, after school, I come by the crib, we watch Saved by the Bell, 90210, whatever. But in public? No. Yo, but see, yo, see. yo, I'm coming, I'm coming. Let me deal with you. Keep my name out your mouth, son. Gotta go to class, bro. I'm gonna call you. Okay, so what changed from elementary? See, somewhere in our peer pressured circles, culture began to tell them that they were white and that I was black. And we begin to judge one another by the color of our skin instead of the content of our character. Nobody came out of the womb a racist. You came out of the womb looking for love and you accepted love from anybody who showed love to you. Racism, segregation, prejudice, these are learned behaviors. Whether you learn them at home, at school, or from society. And for everybody, Martin Luther King this, Martin Luther King that, Martin Luther King this. If you really think only black lives matter, let me be the first to tell you, Martin Luther King would not be proud. I said it, I said it, yes I did. See, black people can be racist too. Racist, prejudiced, whatever you wanna call it. Sure did, I said it, yep, I sure did. Mama, you gonna be proud of me. Martin Luther King was a Christian. His movement was all about unity and righteousness not division. The reason he used tactics of non-violence and civil disobedience was because of his Christian beliefs. One of his most famous quotes was that he had a dream that little black boys and girls would be holding hands with little white boys and girls. Go ahead, Martin, my boy. That his four little children would live in a nation where they would no longer be judged by the color of their skin but by the content of their character. So I ask you, are we judging people by the color of their skin? Or are we judging people by the content of their character? By what's truly in their hearts? Are we even giving people a chance to present themselves? Or are we judging them off the bat? See, Christ supersedes color lines. Christ brings people together. <laughs> hey, 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 but hey look, don't be offended. Mm -mm. Don't be offended. Mm -mm. That's just me. Just me. I guess I'm just peculiar people. Wow, that was powerful. If you want to follow Stephen Lewis, uh, he's got a lot of great films that he does like this. Uh, simply go to IamPeculiarPeople.com. That's IamPeculiarPeople.com. Him and his wife have now gone full-time into this ministry, so if you're interested in supporting them, just go there, IamPeculiarPeople.com. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Encourage TV. Family-friendly and faith-friendly content absolutely free. Subscribe today and watch hundreds of hours of content on our streaming channels. Visit EncourageTV.com today.
Well, here we are once again at the end of another show. I want you to know that I'm really grateful for those of you that tuned in, not just today, but that have tuned in to many of our previous shows. You know, I do these shows uh, because I really want you to become very aware uh, of all the people that are working in, uh, in the Christian film space. Um, these folks are really sacrificing a lot because they could be working in Hollywood if they wanted to, but here they are doing it for uh, for, for the Lord, really, and uh, because our culture really needs something that will edify them, that will encourage them, that will teach them, um, just something that is very good for their soul. And, and these folks are doing that, and I want you to be very aware of who they are, not only so you can follow them and find out what their movies are, but so that you can pray for them as well. Um, so just keep watching the show. As a matter of fact, if you haven't seen some of the previous shows, you can always go to YouTube. Uh, I have a channel there. Faith on Film TV on YouTube. So if you just go to youtube.com, look for Faith on Film TV, and you will find all kinds of episodes that I've done in the past. Uh, episodes with uh, Nancy Stafford, with uh, Kevin Sorbo, with uh, Mike Norris, who's Chuck Norris's son, just with so many great people that are working in the Christian film industry. Uh, so go check them out and uh, learn all about who they are and uh, follow them, pray for them, just keep them in your hearts. I also want to encourage you to write me. I want—I really want to hear from you. I want to know that you're out there. I want to know who you are. I won't, trust me, I will not be sending you emails. I just want to know who you are, that you're out there and that you're basically, you know, interested in what I'm producing here and you're praying for me. Uh, simply write me at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. Uh, and of course, you can follow me on Instagram, uh, Facebook, and Twitter uh, at faithonfilmtv. I also want to remind you to check out Parables TV, a place where you can watch some wonderful movies, some of them that I talk about here, uh, movies, documentaries, reality shows, just a lot of great content for you and your family. That's parables.tv. Just simply go to parables.tv. Well, that's it for today. Hope to see you again next week. Take care. <laughs>